Hello everyone, welcome to another tutorial from AnalystQ. In this tutorial, we're going to cover all the data types available in the programming language Q. These data types are known as atoms because you cannot reduce them to a smaller data type. These data types are also referred to as nouns and we'll discuss why that is in another video when we discuss Q grammar. So let's get started. Here's a list of Q data types taken from KX reference page, which lists all the different data types and along with their uh, number, character, and literal representation. So here for Boolean, you have its numerical representation, its uh, character, and uh, its literal representation, as well as the size in um, the Boolean takes in bytes. For example, long here has a numerical representation of seven and character representation of J. The table here then shows that a long will take eight bytes in memory. A useful operator to determine type of a queue object is, well, type. When called, it returns the numerical representation. We'll be using it extensively today, so let's take a look at some examples. So here we have the operator type, and we're going to call it on number 1. So we get negative 7h. Then when we run it again on 1, 2, 3, we get 7h. So as you can see above, when we checked for a type of a long 7, we got back negative 7h. However, when we did it for a simple list with elements 1, 2, 3, we got the same value but with a positive sign. Now let's discuss this a bit. First of all, 7 is a long in this case. To define an integer, we must specifically tell Q so. If we don't do it, it defaults to a long which is represented by 7. Now a negative result means it's an atom and a positive result means that it's a simple list consisting of only that data type. For example, 1, 2, 3 is a list containing three longs. Because of these data types of each atom in the list is the same, um, sorry, because the data types of each atom in this uh, list is long, it is considered to be a simple list as opposed to a general list. Now let's go through each data type beginning with Boolean. So here, we're, there are two ways to uh, specify Boolean, either by 0B or 1B. So if we were to check the type of 0B, it's negative 1H. Type of 1B, again, negative 1H. But if we compose a simple list of 1B and 0B, it is a positive result. For byte, very similar, you get negative 4H. Then for short, int, long, real, and float, um, these are very similar to the data types you see in other languages. So I'm not going to go into too much detail about each one of them. Here's how you can specify uh, a short. So by just typing H after the number. And if you do a type on that, it's a negative 5. Now here's a long with 6J, and that's a 7. And then to have a float, you can just have type 6F and it's negative 9H. We could have also just typed 6.0 and that would have been a float as well. Then we have characters. In Q, a character is an atom such as the letter C or M or N. And if you have multiple characters, then that's known as a list of characters. And this is similar to having strings in other languages. So for example, when you do just M and you run type on that, you get a negative result of, for that. But if you were to, you know, traditionally what strings are, if you were to do a type on that, then you get the same value, but positive. So here we can see that this is, because KDB considered this as a list of characters, and because all the, the, type, the type of all the elements in this list is character, it's a simple list, and that's why the result is positive. In Q, there is also a data type known as symbol, which is not related um, to anything that's available in most other languages, at least not that I have seen them. Um, symbols are basically a more efficient way of storing strings under the hood. Uh, we'll learn about when to use them over strings when we cover in the topic called uh, enumeration. For now, all you need to know is that to create a symbol, you just need to use a 
backtick and then type in the name of the symbol or the value of the symbol. So here we're, we have the symbol apple. Uh, if we run type of that, then we know it's of 11. Then we have a bunch of different data types that are related to uh, time. And as you, can, as you can tell, time is important for a time series database, which is why we have so many data types relating to time. We also have a bunch of internal variables that Q provides out of the box in the .c namespace, which are related to time. So we're gonna use them um, in the examples. So for example, .z.p is a quick way to get the current timestamp. So here you go. This is the value that .z.p holds as of now. If you were to run it again, the value would change. So you can see it's as time changes, the value that .z.p holds changes. If we were to do a type on that, we know it's of negative 12, which is a timestamp. Same thing for a month. We have negative 13. Just keep in mind that if we had the same value but without the letter M in the end, then that's just a float. So specifying M makes it of a month data type. Dot C dot D gives us a current, the current date. So it's November 23rd right now in 2018. If you were to do type on that, that gives you a type of negative 14. Um, dot Z dot Z is similar to dot Z dot P, but with less precision. So you're getting a timestamp, but uh, you're not, you don't have the same precision as earlier on. Uh, the type of that is negative 15. Dot Z dot N gives you the time span. And the type of that is negative 16. To get the minute data type, you have to type it as with the hours and colon and the minute. And the type of that is negative 17H. You can do something similar, but include the seconds as well. And that's negative 18. Then finally, dot Z dot T gives you the current time. This is a very useful variable uh, to get the latest timestamp. And then the type is negative 19. So these were all the basic data types that you should know. In this tutorial, we covered a bunch of things, uh, specifically the basic data types and their various representations, the type operator, positive types versus negative types. We covered simple lists versus general lists, and important internal time related variables in .c namespace. In a future video, we'll discuss how to cost one value from one type to another. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave your feedback in the comment section or email me at himanshu at enlistq.com. Thank you very much.